Spring has sprung. The sap is rising. Love is in the air. And I can't think of any more clichés. It's just as well, because tonight we're moving into original and fresh territory, looking at an industry we've never covered before. Now, first impressions are everything, so it's important I look my best. And even more important, that I'm on time. Don't you just hate it when this happens? Flip! Flip! It's a big day and you're going to be late! Flip! I mean, they'll all be waiting. Flip. The bride, the groom, the guests. Flip! Flip! Even the bride's mum! Flip! Now, there's a relief. The speeches haven't started yet because everyone's too busy admiring each other's outfits. I'll be honest with you, I've never quite got the fascination with bridal wear. I'm more of a dressing down kind of guy. But I do understand this. People like big weddings, and the dress is the focus of a big wedding, so people deserve to get what they're paying for. Not her. She's a researcher. That dress costs 50 quid. But real brides with a bigger budget deserve more. They've been going to these two shops for their dresses. Amazing Brides in Wakefield and the Wedding Dress Studio in Dewsbury. They're not to be confused with other bridal shops of similar names, and they're run by husband and wife team Bev and Dean Hanson Shaw. It would almost be quite sweet if they hadn't ruined so many weddings. In fact, we've had so many complaints. We've got them all together in one room. Here we go. Don't worry, I've done this before. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to Bev and Dean, of amazing brides and the wedding dress studio. Tough crowd. When Cheryl Tucker, Nevali, was getting married, she and her mum went to Dean's wedding dress studio to buy the gown. He said, oh, this looks fantastic on a bigger girl, you know, it really shapes, you know, the shape of the curves and everything, it's going to look beautiful on you. Dean said the dress, which cost £1,200, would be made exactly to her measurements. It took six months, and when it was finally ready... It just it's fell to bits. It didn't fit properly. Mm. It was still mi miles too big. Mm. As you tried it on, you could hear all the beads and sequins and things just, just plopping onto the floor. Now, Cheryl's wedding was just weeks away, but having taken her money, Dean was in no mood to help. So I was just pleading with him over text messages saying, please, it's my wedding day, Dean. Please, can we sort this? And his response, stop texting me now. Anything, any problems you have, put in writing to my solicitors. So I was like, well, why are you being so nasty like this? With less than a fortnight before her big day, Cheryl gave up. She had to buy an entirely new dress for more than a thousand pounds. But Rebecca Shaw didn't have that option. By the time her wedding came along, she'd already spent two and a half thousand pounds on dresses from Bev's store, Amazing Brides. It was too small, even though I'd lost three stone. It was smaller. Yeah. Than the new reduced size you. Yeah. We just burst into tears, didn't we? Because it, it, it was no good. It just didn't. We, there were no way she could wear that dress because it didn't fit her. Here's the evidence. The dress bev supply was at least five inches too small at the back and had to be held together with pins. Bev's attitude, well. The day, day before the wedding, my mum went to confront her, and she nearly. She said that if my mum didn't leave, she was going to phone the police and have my mum arrested. With the wedding just days away, it was too late for Rebecca to find another dress. So she paid another seamstress to do a quick fix, sewing a panel into the back so it would at least fit. When she walked down aisle, all you could see was where the dress had been altered, the big holes where the pieces had to be put in so that it, it would zip up. Um, we were told when she, she knelt down in church, if she, if she weren't careful, how she stood up, she could leave the bottom half of her dress on the floor. Luckily, it lasted till about eight, seven, eight o'clock at night, and then they started tearing at the bottom, like coming apart. So I just flung it over my shoulders and just carried on. 
Alongside the complaints over quality, we've also heard from brides who ordered so-called unique designs. Faye Lansdon was assured the dress she paid for was a one-off. Then a friend spotted the same design in a wedding photo. One of our bridesmaids said to me, oh, I've just seen your dress. And I said, the dress? Which dress? And she said, the one for Amazing Brides. So I got a little bit emotional then, as you can imagine. We walked over and I just couldn't look and she bit down and she said, no, that's your dress. So this was a dress that you had been told was unique, was designed and made by Bev at Amazing Brides. And yet, there it was being sold at a, at a bridal fair by someone else. Yeah. Faye tried to cancel her order but received a resounding no, along with another threat of legal action. They've got a thousand pounds of our money. The wedding hasn't... Oh. Take your time, it's all right. And you know, the wedding's in three months and we've had to completely change everything. And there's were those points that I said to Rob, we really can't go through with the wedding. Because you just put your trust in a company and just expect that every, everything will be OK. So, two wedding stores and some very distressed brides. Yet, yeah, look on the internet and you'll find a bunch of positive reviews for both companies. Yeah, they are positive, but there's also something a little bit weird about them. Take this reviewer. She says she bought her dress from Amazing Brides, yet in the same week she posts a review of the gown she bought from the Wedding Dress Studio. So, one bride buys two different dresses from two different shops in the same week, and both of those shops are owned by the Hanson Shaws. It's a bit of a coincidence. It's also a bit odd. Yeah, it certainly is odd. And you know what I'm thinking? Exactly. I'm thinking that we need to pay a visit to those stores ourselves, with two of our researchers posing as blushing brides. Want to know how they get on? I do. Back to Bev and Dean Hanson Shaw now, the husband and wife who run wedding stores in West Yorkshire. We've heard from brides who ordered made-to-measure outfits that didn't fit, whose gowns fell apart, and who paid for supposedly unique dresses that they then found somewhere else. So it's time for us to put their stores to the test. It's time to unleash the Bridezillas. Yes, meet Anna and Muriel. Well, we are talking about weddings. They're both researchers and fellas. They're both single. <laughs> but today, they're brides-to-be, planning their big day along with their bridesmaids, which is worrying. They're off to Amazing Brides of Wakefield and the wedding dress studio in Dewsbury. Ooh, madam. I wanna kiss the bride. That white really suits you. Looks <laughs> really pretty. <laughs> There are just eight weeks to go before Anna's entirely fictional wedding, but over at Bev's store, Amazing Brides, she may just have found the dress. <gasps> so what design's this? What design? Ours, we make them. Are you joking? No, you heard it right, this is an original design. You won't find it anywhere else. I'm impressed. But like any self-respecting bridezilla, Anna wants a bit more. I could have a lace-up. Yeah. If you want but... a lace-up, we can do it. You know how there's like a few beads on here? Yeah. Kind of a few beads. Do you know where I put extra beading on this dress? There. Yeah, I can see. All the way around. Got it. Look amazing. Amaze balls. Well, you are amazing brides. Bev explains this is only the shop's sample dress. She'll make Anna a new version complete with requested changes. It'll fit like a glove and cost £1,650. And it's made to measure. I know. Another thing, you know what? You don't get up to child down in London unless you are really paying for it, do you? Hey, five grand for that in London. Yeah. Yeah, it's made especially for you, to your measurements. OK, done. Anna's measured for her bespoke gown and pays a £900 deposit. But while signing the sales contract, she notices a clause in it. And it's a bit of a funny one. Ahem. I understand that any online reviews written by me with regard to Amazing Brides will be subject to scrutiny by Amazing Brides lawyers and may result in legal action. What's that about, Bev? Because we get shops that put stuff about us. You know, because we're such a busy shop, we've got great stuff in here, we get other shops that have a Oh, I see it's rival stalls who post the bad reviews. Not the unhappy brides that we met earlier. They, of course, are chucked to bits. 
Okay, so how do you want to pay the Anyway, back to our gown. Bev guarantees us once again that it will be made to measure. It's a made to measure dress, it'll be absolutely spot on. Unless you change, the dress will be bang on perfect. Okay. okay. You don't need to ring me up every day. I'm, I'm fully aware of when we need this dress for, and I'll ring you the minute it's here. Suitably reassured, Anna forks out £184 for a veil and tiara to complete the look. She's calm, she's serene. Everything's in hand, she can relax. Bit smug. Not so Muriel. She is terrible. The wedding day's closing in and there's just so much to do. I mean, I would help, but it's not a real wedding. <laughs> yeah, try telling Muriel that. She's stressed, she's strung out, she's feeling the strain. Look, GCSE in drama. She got a B. OK, I think we can agree that Muriel needs to get her dress sorted and quick. So she heads for the wedding dress studio in Dewsbury, where Bev's husband, Dean, is head honcho. And he's got an interesting turn of phrase. The difference is what we call dark ivory. Ah, oh, that ivory. one's nice. Dark ivory is not dark and it's not ivory. By its description, we call it dark ivory because there is a difference. So dark ivory, but not dark or ivory. He's the designer. Yeah, we are. It's, it's, our, it's our style. Ah, right, you, you design you them. Cannot, you cannot buy any of this range from a shop. Wow, it's another Hanson Shaw original. Looky, looky. Dean tells Muriel it'll cost her £850 for this unique design. She says she needs some time to think, which gives me time to do some research. Although I've never really had anything to do with wedding dresses before, I am picking up a little bit of knowledge. This, for instance, is a sweetheart neckline with hand-beaded bodice and crystals, and it's a mermaid-style skirt. This is a strapless neckline, floor-length gown, beautiful line skirt with hand-beading and applique, and this is organza fabric. Now, this is an A-line silhouette with a strapless flared pleated neckline. That looks terribly familiar. It certainly does. It's called Calistoga, and it's designed and sold by global dressmakers Enzo Arni. It bears a striking resemblance to the dress we've just been shown by Dean Hanson Shaw, the one he said was unique. So are the two dresses the same? I need the views of an expert. But not any old expert. I'm going to see a fashion doyenne. Who's designed for every A-lister from Liz Hurley to Paula Abdul to Helena Bonham Carter. And she helped design that dress. Ladies and gents, let's give a big road traders welcome to... It's only Elizabeth Emmanuel. Here she comes. Here comes the bride, Elizabeth. And I ask Elizabeth to compare the dress from Dean's shop to the catwalk creation. Well, looking at the back, it's very, very similar to this design. The buttons up the back, it's that particularly that embroidered applique with all the sequins and glittery things. It's the same shape as this, and that's quite a distinctive feature. It, it looks virtually identical, the draping, everything. A bit more than coincidence. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a copy. I mean, the key features are the pleats around the bust with that bit of embroidery there. You've got the crisscross coming underneath the embroidery, and you've got that bit on the skirt where it starts to fan out. Well, it's one and the same dress, as far as I can see. I don't see any difference at all. And neither did the makers Enzoani. When we showed them Dean Hanson Shaw's design, they said it appeared to be a carbon copy of theirs. Mind you, Dean might not be alone. It looks like wife Bev is at it, too. At her store, Amazing Brides, we saw the same dress on sale. And again, it was being touted as unique, as Bev's assistant confirmed. Look, there are designs. They're your designs. You won't find our designs in any of the shop. These are ours. Now, if that was your dress, your design, and you found out that somebody else was selling a copy of I it... I would be absolutely furious. Yeah, I would definitely be on the phone to the lawyers. So, an original that's not very original, and an expert who's definitely not very impressed. But what about the other dress? The one that's supposed to be being made from scratch, and which, we've been promised, will be perfect. The fitting begins in about ten minutes. They've got tea and biscuits. Yeah, I'll make you OK, the big day's approaching for Amazing Brides of Wakefield and the wedding dress studio of Dewsbury, not to be confused with businesses of similar names. Thank you. 
They're run by Bev and Dean Hanson Shaw, respectively, and Bev and Dean, appropriately, are married to each other. But we found them selling supposedly unique designs that have been copied from others, and worse, so-called bespoke gowns that just don't fit. Well, our researcher Anna is about to pick up her made-to-measure dress from Bev's store. In fact, is that her now? Hi. Yes, that's our Anna, but that's not Bev. It's her assistant. She shows Anna to the fitting room where she spots this notice. Please note, dresses are standard size nearest to your own. Hey? Oh, quick question. I've just seen that sign. Yeah, that's, that's normal. That's just for anybody else. Yours isn't. You, you've had yours made specially. Are you with me? From scratch? For everybody else, it's like standard dress size nearest to your own. So you mine's been made from... From scratch. From scratch for you, for your measurements. Phew, thanks, thanks for this. Oh, flipping heck, yeah, good. It's what we were promised, you see, and it's what we were paying £1,650 for. So, here it comes, our from scratch, made to measure dress. I can't breathe now. You've got to loosen that. That will Did never... you have a bra on when you tried it on before? No. Right. Wish yeah. I'd have been at this yeah. sitting with I am starting to panic a bit at my wedding is this weekend. This weekend? No wonder she's panicking. I must get this dress to Elizabeth. I'll put it in the top box of my motorcycle, where it will fit perfectly without being visible. Don't panic! Don't panic! So, right, look. it's a bit like Silent Witness, this bit. Uh. Unveil uh -huh. the dress. The first clue is a size 8 label. We were told it had been made to Anna's specific measurements. In fact, didn't Bev say... The dress will be bang on perfect. Okay. I, I thought so, yes. Looking at that, that would make me very suspicious. In fact, looking at it, this does look factory made. It's all, it's all unmade, it's all unsuck. The fabrics themselves are sort of made, I think even the label says like polyester. For a lower, lower price point, this would be fine, okay, but I, to pass it off as a £1,600 dress, I, I would be quite upset, actually. <laughs> OK, time for the really big question. What is the fit like? Do well, we know what the fit was it's like? It's a little bit tight on me. Don't worry, Anna's here to play the blushing bride. But she's blushing more than she should be. <laughs> What's happened at the front? Um, yes, <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll look. You, you look, because okay. I can tell there's room there for a mobile phone, yeah, yeah. a wallet, <laughs> a purse. Well, obviously the fit here is wrong. I mean, look, it's not fitted here and it's gaping here, and it's not the right size. I'm standing quite close. You can actually see right down there. You can move around in it. I can actually turn it the whole way around. Yes, I think we can call this dress a disaster. I mean, blokes could look down Anna's cleavage. I'm not going to. Obviously, I was brought up properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, what can I say, really? It's just... Too, too big up here, it's too everything. It feels like it could fall down. Yeah. Elizabeth, is there a chance that this could have been made to measure? No, this is not made to measure, otherwise they wouldn't let that happen. And they shouldn't have let this happen either. Remember that new veil and bespoke tiara we also ordered? Well, we were given the wrong tiara, and our new veil looks old. OK, explanation time. Anna's on the phone to Bev. Hello, amazing bride. Now, obviously we can't see what Bev's saying, so here's a glossy, expensive reconstruction. Mm. I just thought it's being made from scratch. It can't be made from scratch. So why would you sew a size 8 label inside? It's a sign that you've got what you've ordered from me. And we've worked overnight to get it done for you in time. We've all been so stressed over this dress. We seem to be looking for faults on it. And we've done our best and we're all really stressed out with it now. Well, you're stressed. What about Anna? She's getting married at the weekend. Well, she isn't, but you think she is. And how about that tiara? If you're not happy with the tiara, come back in. And please have a reason for it. Why you gotta be so mean? That's not the attitude you want two days before your wedding. I mean, obviously we know it's not a real wedding, but Bev doesn't. No wonder she and Dean have left a trail of unhappy brides behind them. Well, now it's time for their special day. Now, Bev and Dean's solicitors say they're on holiday, but we don't think they are. We think they're here at the wedding dress studio, which doubles at their home. And today it's looking a little different. They've boarded up the gates. 
BMW is there. It's in the garage with the boot open, so Bev and Dean are clearly at home, but they're not answering the bell. And here they are. Hi, Bev. Hi, Dean. How's it going? There's maybe it's a very small hole. There's a good chance they didn't see me. But I hope the gates don't open. Hello, Bev and Dean. It's Matt here from BBC Rogue Traders. Is it possible we could have a chat about uh, the brides that you've left in tears and the wedding dress that you sold us, which had this big gap down the front? They just aren't interested. Maybe they need to see what an amazing bride's bride looks like. Time for a wedding. And of course, if you're going to have a wedding, you'll need a vicar. And some bridesmaids. You, you, and you. Send in the bride and groom. You look really quite worrying. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. You're looking kind of, yeah. Just keep pulling it up, yeah? No, look at it. I'd rather not. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we're here to celebrate the coming together of a perfectly matched couple. Not you two. Beverly and Dean Hanson-Shaw, without whose intervention and money-making tactics, many people would have had an utterly delightful wedding. We've got quite a few questions, and the Hanson-Shaws can obviously hear us, so they've sent us a gift, our something blue. Well, the police gentleman, he feels it's time for us to move on, and I, I think he's got it just about right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to move on. Amen to that. But we couldn't leave without giving the Hanson Shaws a wedding gift. Right, where's my lift? I got you Both Bev and Dean Hanson Shaw say they've been selling bridewear for 20 years and have served thousands of extremely satisfied brides. They say their businesses are entirely separate. Bev describes the wedding industry as a highly stressful trade where emotions run high. She says she knew our pretend bride was different and maintains that we manufactured a problem situation, which she tried to accommodate. But nothing she did was ever right in our eyes. She said she would have addressed the problem if she had been in the wrong and adds that the people featured in our film signed those satisfaction notes. As for me, I'm signing off by making Bev and Dean Hanson Shaw the latest faces on our rogues gallery. Thanks, Matt. A lot of drivers are getting in touch.